for you guys today. Uh, today we're going to do one on the drop shot. I'm going to show you basically the equipment that I like to use, the soft plastics, the line, the rod, and the reels when I decide to tie on a drop shot. Let's go start off like we do normally. If you haven't seen any of my rigging videos before, check out my Tackle Talk playlist. I'll leave a link in the description box here. You'll see the lines, the rods, the reels, the baits that I use for just about every tactic that I use to catch a bass with. Today we're going to talk about the drop shot. So you guys have been asking about it. Let's start with very simple knowledge here. What is the drop shot? The drop shot is pretty simple. Uh, it's a simple tactic, simple deal that gets really complicated really fast. We're just going to broad, we're going to take this very broad subject and bring it down to something very small part that you guys can take in and use to help you catch fish. So drop shot is basically what you have. Uh, traditionally you have the sinker on top of a hook and a soft plastic, you know, that's a Texas rig, right? Well, on our, um, drop shot here basically what we're going to have is some type of hook all right like this this is a drop shot hook and then our weight is actually dangling below the hook all right so the bait is suspended above the bottom is basically what we got with the drop shot very basic knowledge here now when you start talking about what types of hooks that's where the conversation gets really broad i use two hooks for drop shotting and i'm going to show you what both of those are here I use what a standard drop shot hook. Most of your standard drop shot hooks are going to be a very small hook and it can be really intimidating to use them because they're so small you're probably thinking, well, how am I ever going to keep a bass hook on a hook that small? I promise you, you'll keep them pegged. I've caught plenty of, of decent sized fish on, on a drop shot hook. And here's the one in the context of drop shotting. This is what you're normally going to hear about right here. This is a number two, which is pretty much what I use for everything. Wacky rigs, drop shot, no matter what size plastic it is, I normally use this guy right here, a number two drop shot hook. You see it's really small here. And then there's also another hook that we'll talk about later on. Um, just a straight shank hook that we'll use to Texas rig our drop shot. I'll show you what that looks like a little bit later too. Two different types of drop shots, okay? That's basically what we're gonna do. Well, there's a lot of different types of drop shots. Those are just two, we're gonna narrow it down to those two in this conversation, okay? So we got two style hooks. We have a sinker, just a round ball. You can use tungsten if you want to. I still use just an old round lead sinker for, for drop shotting. That's what, you, what I use. All right, for our rod, what I'm using is a seven foot one inch favorite six stick. This is a really affordable, great combo right here. I've used this guy for two years now. It's uh, very light, has the perfect action. Thing I like about it, you know, I can turn a fish around with this if I have to. Every time somebody hears something about spinning rods, all they think about is light, 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 light. Oh my God, I'm, not, I'm too big of a man to use a spinning rod. Okay, you can have that. You'll win that conversation with me anytime. But this guy, I've caught redfish on this guy. I've saltwater fish with it. This is probably the rod that I've caught more fish the last two years on than any rod that I got in my tackle box here. Six stick, seven one, it's a medium heavy, uh, fast taper or fast action rod here. Uh, for my reel, this is a loose TLC 3000 series reel. It's a good spinning reel. This is their high end loose spinning reel. I'm using 20 pound test braided line strike kit strike king pro grade line i struggle with strike king every time it just will not come out of my mouth 20 pound test strike king pro grade braided line that's what i got on here for my braided line and for my drop shots it's going to be anywhere between six and as heavy as 12 pound test line it doesn't have to be very light it just depends on what kind of what style bait you're using and how you're rigging it and what's going on water clarity is a lot of different factors in there you have to judge for yourself on your fluorocarbon side but braid to fluorocarbon 12 pound test uh strike king pro grade fluorocarbon i'm going to tie that my connection knot is going to be an alberto knot so we'll tie that guy up here and i don't you i don't really normally use a different style fluorocarbon for my leading material as if I was just going to spool my reel up, you know, all the way. Uh, and I, most of the time I do use a braid to floral combination. And there's times where I will use straight fluorocarbon. But 
generally speaking, braid to floral combination. Here we go. This is how I measure my fluorocarbon. I'm going to go out like that one time, all right? My whole wingspan, and then I go half. That's how I measure my fluorocarbon leader. You guys have seen me do that before. So no need to go too in depth with that. That's how I measure my fluorocarbon leader. Take my tag in and my connection knot is the Alberto knot. Now, I want, like I said in all my videos, these, these are not knot tying, these are not knot tying videos. So I'm just gonna kind of rush through this knot. I'll leave a link in the description box of how you can tie the Alberto knot and I'll slow it down to where it makes sense. It's a very easy knot. You'll see I'll tie it up here while I'm talking to you. That tells you how easy it is because I can't talk and do anything. I can't talk on the phone and walk. I can't talk on the phone and, and like if my wife tries to say something to me while I'm talking on the phone, my brain just goes into like, it's like a computer when it has too many screens open, too many tabs open. My brain just, it literally farts basically. So take my tag in, go back through the loop that I just made there. There's my Alberto knot. It's a really simple knot to tie when the wind's blowing outside or when it's cold and my hands are freezing or if I'm breaking off a lot. You know, sometimes you're just going to be fishing a drop shot in a place where you, quite honestly, you're just breaking off a lot. Always moisten your knot before you cinch it down. Cinch that guy down. There's my Alberto knot there. Now I'll clip my tag ends. Uh, clip the other one. Alberto knot. All right, now let's start with just your traditional drop shot setup first. And then we'll go to some of the other fancy ones that I like to use. Real important, when you're rigging your drop shot, this is, this is where you really want to pay attention, okay? You want, when you thread this hook, it starts right from the beginning on doing this right. When you thread this hook on your line, you want to make sure your hook point is up, all right? So, Basically what I'm saying, here's my, here's my line where I'm gonna connect my line tie to. I want that hook point up. See, this is the line here vertically in front of me. I want that hook point up, so the bend to be up. I don't want it down like that. See, the hook point is down here. That's all bad, okay? Rig it, your line down through the, through the line tie like that, so your hook point is up. So I'm going to insert my line here through the line tie. All right. I'm going to do just a standard Palomar knot is all I'm going to do. Okay. So I always want that hook point up, standard Palomar knot. You're going to rig it from the top. That way when you finish rigging it, your hook point standing up like it's supposed to. That's going to make a lot more sense later on. Okay. And I'm just going to tie a standard Palomar knot. Now, at this point, when tying this Palomar knot, it's very important to get you a lot of tag in because that tag in from your Palomar knot is what, what you're gonna connect your weight to. So I like to get a lot of, lot of tag in. If I'm gonna get an 18 inch, if I want an 18 inch drop shot from my hook to my sinker, I want 18 inches of gap, I'll go ahead and try to get out you know, two foot of tag in line just so I, I've got enough when I get to the end. You don't wanna get to the end of your knot and not have enough tag in, so I'll make extra and we can always cut it back, but we can't start over. So I'll, I'll connect it like this. Go ahead and do the standard Palomar knot. Moisten my knot. I'll moist mine down twice. There. Okay. So now when I've tied my Palomar knot, my hook point is up like this. Hook point up. Very important part right here. Pay close attention. I'm going to take that tag in that is going to be meant for my my weight, that leader part, and then I'm actually, I'll hold my hook just like this, hook point up again, and I'm gonna run that tag in back through, it's very important, back through the line tie. When I do that, what's gonna happen is that's gonna make the, that's gonna make the hook stand straight up, which is gonna be very important in getting the proper action on your drop shot, all right? So I'm gonna make it do that. Now look, you see it. You see how that hook? Look how that hook. You see how it, it stands straight out from the hook point there. Hope you guys can see that. See how it stands straight out. That's very important because now when my weight's on the bottom, it's going to be easier for my plastic to stand up exactly like it's supposed to. All right, so I'll do that. Now it's time to tie on my 
drop shot weight. So for my drop shot weight, what I like to use anywhere between an eighth ounce and as heavy as a, I've used three eighths before, but for the most, most of the time, I'm gonna use a quarter or a three sixteenth. Three sixteenth or a quarter ounce is basically where, I, where I, the most versatile size is for you to use there. Now I've used as heavy as a three eighths um, and I've used as light as an eighth, but I think for you guys just starting off and you don't know where, you just need somewhere to get started, I think, I think anywhere between a three sixteenth and a quarter is gonna be your best bet. Now these little weights have a little clasp and it's meant to hold your to just hold your line. You can basically just clip it in there. I don't like to do that because if you get a fish on and it starts shaking, it's going to throw you your sinker off. What I like to do is just tie a simple overhand knot around my weight sinker tie and just call it good. Now some people will claim that 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 will actually twist your line more. Okay, I'll take the line twist over a lost sinker every time I get a fish on. So you can gauge what's more important for you. If you don't mind a few line twists, and it does, because the reason the line twists is when you tie a knot over it, your sinker doesn't, it, it doesn't tie directly in the top. It's off to the side a little bit, and it calls, that sinker does kind of twirl around a little bit. I don't, I'd rather take the few extra line twists over losing a sinker about every two or three fish. So there we go. We've got about 18 inches of leader between the hook and the sinker. And I've got my number two drop shot hook standing off the side perfectly. All right, that's what we got there. So let's start digging into the baits now. What do I like to use for baits? I've got basically, I think it's four categories of baits that I like to use when I'm talking about drop shotting. I'm talking about drop shotting a lot of times in the winter or even in the summer when I know fish are, or I'm fishing really deep, 25, 30, 40, as deep as 50 foot deep where I live, I'm going to use a lot of minnow style baits like this. This is a Z-Man Streaks. I'll use this guy to, to drop vertically. All right, this, this bait is one that I'm primarily going to use when I'm fishing the drop shot directly under my boat. Now, for, I know for a lot of you guys, especially if you're new to drop shotting, you're probably not going to fish a drop shot as a vertical presentation directly under the boat. You're probably going to be casting it out. And I've caught a lot of fish over the years casting a drop shot. Just here recently, we did a video for Mystery Tackle Box, casting a big TRD to little dark spots, light spots, fish that were spawning. All right. So there's another category of baits that we'll use for that. We'll use just straight tail worms like this guy. This is a Z-Man floating worms or Z-Man finesse worms. This is a four inch little just straight tail bait here. You see that's pink because it's really popular for drop shotting. I'll use stick baits. This is the one that we just filmed with for mystery tackle box right here. Maybe I'll throw in a little clip right here of a fish catch that we had right here on the big TRD. Just a four inch stick bait is all I had here on the drop shot. Oh yeah, good bite there. Yeah, yeah. That's on the Copper Truce TRD too. Yeah, that's a better one. Finally a good one. Finally a good one. Finally a good one. I knew if I just stuck with it, I'd get a good one. Whoa, get down, get down, get down, get down, get down. I knew if I just stuck with it. Copper Truce TRD on a drop shot. Hold on, a change is coming. Hold on, don't you worry about a thing. Come here to me, Copper Truce. Big TRD spooned. Yes. Oh. They fishing in 10 to 12 foot of water, throwing at some dark spots that you would see on the bottom was this guy right here. Just throwing a TRD. We threw three different colors today copper truce like what you see right here I also caught a few on a color called mud bug and i started off with the deal the deal is more like a shad pattern color four inch stick bait i'll use this guy wacky shot i'll show you how to rig each one of these baits in this video too and the other style bait which i guess pretty much is a stick bait is any of your ned baits your ned rig baits one I use the most is this guy, the hula stick. The hula stick's four inches long. You can even use the finesse TRD as well on your drop shot. Primarily when I pick up a drop shot, those are gonna be the category of baits that I use. 
course, you can put a lot of different style baits on your drop shots, but predominantly that four style baits that I just showed you is what I'm gonna use when I'm fishing the drop shot. All right, so let's talk about, let's show you how you rig these baits. I'm gonna start with the minnow style bait that I talked about first. This is one that I fish, you know, primarily when I'm fishing a little bit deeper. Uh, with this guy, I'm gonna do what's called nose hooking the bait. Nose hooking is exactly what it sounds like. I'll take my little minnow style bait right here and I'll just hook it dead in the center of the nose like that. All right, what happens, you drop that thing down 25 foot, 30 foot, whatever it is. You can even cast it if you want to, just primarily this style bait, I'm gonna be, uh, be fishing it vertical. But you just drop it out and that bait will hit the bottom and it'll stand off the bottom however big, however long your, your leader is. It'll float, Z-Man plastic floats, so it's gonna have this little action, it's gonna dangle like that, and that's how you catch your fish with it. You can do the same thing, nose hooking with the hula stick, which is our net rig bait. You can do the same thing with your stick bait as well. Just nose hook it. It's very simple, nothing, nothing complicated at all. You're just gonna nose hook it right in the, the front eighth inch of the bait. Just nose hook it like that. Simple as that. Nothing else, nothing complicated about that. Sure, everybody can understand that, right? All right, that's just your standard drop shot. Now, the other way you can rig it, same setup, 18 to 24 inches. You can vary this length on your leader between your sinker and your hook as much as you need. You can make it shorter, you can make it longer. Whatever you wanna do, whatever the fish need for that particular day. It's just like sinker size. Sometimes you need a heavier sinker, sometimes you need a lighter sinker. Same with drop shotting. There's really not a reason that you can pinpoint that says, all right, for this application, I need a longer leader. For this application, I need a shorter leader. You just kinda of gotta figure out what the fish need for that particular day. We'll use the same bait with a different style hook We'll take our little drop shot hook here that we're gonna Texas rig, rig the same way, same knot, same everything else, same leader length, and you can take that same bait and use it as a Texas rig, just like that. Now if you're fishing brush piles or you're casting that guy out in weeds and you don't wanna hang up quite as bad, just Texas rig it with a straight shank hook, just like that, all right? So you can do that with the straight tail worm. You can rig it like this. Texas rig drop shot. You can take your big TRD or your stick bait, any kind of stick bait that you guys would like to use. You can do the same thing. Texas rig this guy, front eighth of it. If you guys don't know what a Texas rig is, I'll leave a, a link in the description or check out my Tackle Talk playlist. You'll see a lot of uh, videos on Texas rigs there. And you can rig it just like that. Do everything the same way we did the traditional drop shot. 18 to 24 is leader between your hook and your sinker. Do your palomar knot, run the, back, the tag end back through, and that'll make your hook stand complete, completely straight out like that. All right, so you can do that as well. Now, this is the way that I have caught more fish here recently with a drop shot than anything. Uh, I do this up north. I do this down here at home, especially in the springtime where fish are spawning and you're wanting to cast a bait out, and you want it to stay in position a lot longer. If I see a dark spot, in springtime, I love casting at dark spots, light spots, because that's where fish, we don't have a lot of shoreline structure. I don't have grass, we don't have a lot of woods, we don't have a lot of laydowns. Some of our lakes don't even have docks. So the fish don't have much to camouflage themselves in other than bank transitions or bottom transitions, dark spots to light spots, sand to clay clay to rock and i can see those transitions under the water a lot of times maybe it's a stump maybe it's dead decaying leaves on the bottom those fish are set in those places and because it's darker there they feel hid and protected and they feel like they can ambush their prey as it comes along i use that to my advantage to pinpoint where fish may be so what i like to do is when i cast to those areas i want my bait to stay in the strike zone as long as possible so I use a technique, what's called wacky shotting. Wacky shotting, you guys know what wacky rigging is, all right? Where you just take a soft plastic, hook it in the middle, cast it out, and let it cast sink down. Well, wacky shotting is basically the same thing, except it's on a drop shot. I'll take my traditional drop shot hook here, and I just take whatever plastic I'm using and hook it in the middle just like that. Cast it out to those dark spots, those light spots, wherever I think fish are spawning, 
cast it out, let it sink. It hits the bottom much faster than if I were to take this bait and just try to fish it weightless or like a Nico. With the drop shot, the springtime fish are gonna be biting. All right, they're gonna be biting. Cast it out to the spot where you think there's a fish at, let it hit the bottom and you shake it. You just want bottom contact this time of year. Shake it, shake it, shake it. But when I'm shaking it, if I cast to that dark spot, since a drop shot, it stays in position a lot better. When I cast it to that spot, it stays there. It stays there. Aggravates that fish. You can't take it and he bites it. Perfect presentation to use for any straight tail worm you got, just like this one. Perfect presentation for especially any thick spotted bass in particular. Love a fat short bait. The big TRD stick baits my favorite to rig this way wacky shotting and as well as any of your ned rig baits the big trd the finesse trd you guys know what the finesse trd is i know or the hula stick some of my favorite of all time wacky shotting baits i'll take that bait just like this hook it dead in the center and just dangle it around in any of the spots that i see that I think a fish is spawning. So that's a little bit about how I like to fish the drop shot. That's the rod, the reel, the line that I use to catch fish when I tie on a drop shot. Make sure you check out the description box. I'll link all the equipment that I have here. You can find it at my website, shopdlac.com.